Hey, so I just want to provide a, an update to my multiplayer stress test. So before we were getting um, like 20 players at 70% CPU utilization. And I got a comment here from Technic, Technico Cave, Technico's Cave. And he was just, he or she was uh, concerned that the CPU utilization shouldn't be so high. And I agree. I wanted it to be better. Um, so they suggested to use the pro a profiler, well, Godot's profiler. So I tried that, um, and it just showed me like, uh, it showed me that the physics, um, the physics function was, I mean, being used, but it didn't like narrow anything down. And I, yeah. So, but what I then realized was the floor collision shape. Previously, I had mentioned that I used a more complex collision shape because I thought it'd be indicative of what you'd see in a real game. Well, unfortunately, that seems to be an issue. Um, and I think it's because the collision shapes, every time they enter a new subdivision, the the physics engine needs to do another calculation. I believe that's how it works. And so what I did instead, I tried a few things. I tried a box mesh first, a box collision shape, and that improved the utilization. And then I tried a, a plane and I created I created a single convex collision shape and you can see in the dialog box it says this is the fastest but least accurate option for collision detection so i went with a bunch of small ones of that and you can see them scattered about and so i have the server open and i'll go ahead and launch 29 instances that'll be 30 players so let's see what happens So it'll launch and it basically hits uh, 43%. Um, I tried going to 40 and for some reason that extra 10 jumped up to 98 80 to 90%. Um, so I don't know what, what that's all about, but oops. But so this is 30. And you can see these CPU utilizations around 43%. So I think this is a significant improvement. And so basically the lesson here is you got to be careful with your collision shapes. Um, you're going to have to find a way to make interesting terrain, uh, but not get too crazy with the complexity of the shapes. But yeah, a 30 person game that's a 15 on 15. That's like an Arathi Basin, uh, World of Warcraft battleground. Um, and actually, if we redo our, we can redo our calculation that we did last time, price calculation. So we said 10,000 players, whoops, 10,000 players four hours a day, so from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m., because remember, these are hardcore players at this time, I I would imagine, uh, 30 days times 0042 cents per hour, and now if we divide by 30, if we have 15, by 15 versus 15, it could be like a battlefield game, something like that as well. So now you're talking about $168 a month. So, yeah, so I guess the range is $168 to $500 a month, depending on how many players your game is. So that's just an update. Um, still unable to hit like 64 or 100 players. Um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm out of ideas. I don't know what else to change as far as, I mean, I changed the, the collision shapes of the floor. I don't know what else I could change. Um, if any of you have any ideas, let me know. Um, 
Oh yeah, and a small note. So I, it seems like the threading doesn't make a difference. The run on a separate thread setting in the project settings, it doesn't seem to make a difference. Uh, that, but if that was, if that did, I can imagine that would be the game changer to maybe get us to sixty four players or a hundred. So anyway, thanks for watching.